Hi everyone, how are you doing? Cedar Lee here and welcome to my studio on a very rainy, cold day in Portland, Oregon. And I have just completed a big commissioned work that luckily at every stage of the process I took video footage. So I have things to share with you from every stage from beginning to end. So I'm really excited to show this to you. It's a approximately nine foot tall painting that is going to hang in a 13 foot tall stairwell on a huge vertical wall. And it's painted on three live edge slabs that all came from the same trunk of a huge maple tree. And without further ado, uh, let me just show you everything that I did on this project. So enjoy. So this is the picture that the client sent me of his 13 foot tall stairwell. And when I saw this, I immediately had the idea of a, a really tall piece of art hanging on this wall that could actually be made from the cross section of a tall tree. So I started visiting local woodworkers who have wood shops where they sell live edge slabs. And I found this piece from a redwood tree that he wasn't crazy about the blocky shape of it. And then I found this maple slab, which he loved the shape of this, but especially the curves around the edges of it, but it was way too wide at the bottom to fit in that space. And then I found these three small slabs that fit together in an interesting way, but he wasn't crazy about the forked shape of that silhouette. So I remembered how much he liked the maple and I went searching specifically for maple burl slabs. And I found this, which is interesting, but not quite what he was looking for. And then finally, this one is the one. He approved this slab when he saw the picture of it. So I then went to visit that woodworker to see this lab in person and give the woodworker instructions for how to prep it for me to create my paintings on. I told the woodworker to cut it into thirds so that it could hang as three separate pieces, which would be easier to ship across the country and also easier to install in the space. And then on the back of each of those slabs, to install a French cleat to hang onto the wall. So at that point, we had to decide which side of the slab was the front of the slab and which was the back because the French cleat would have to be attached to the back. So he ended up choosing this configuration that this would be the front of the artwork. For the design, my client wanted the imagery of fall colors and fall leaves. So I went for inspiration to two of my favorite fall themed paintings from the past, Winter Foretold and Falling Leaves. And I took elements from these two previous paintings that I wanted to incorporate into this painting. And he specifically wanted a southeastern autumn forest because he is from Asheville, North Carolina, where my family also lives. So I ended up looking at hundreds of Google images of that area of the country during the fall to get inspiration from those colors and those kinds of trees. And then he specifically wanted a local landmark incorporated into the artwork somewhere. And this is uh, Looking Glass Rock in Western North Carolina, which is the landmark I decided to put in there. So here's the design I ended up with in the final mock-up that I sent to him that he approved. You can see I stole a few of the leaves from my previous paintings and then have a little bit of the fall foliage from Western North Carolina and the looking glass rock there at the bottom. At that point, I also finalized my color palette that I was going to use, which you can see is quite limited. It's just titanium white, primary cyan, Payne's gray, burnt umber, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and raw sienna. And I have a printout there of my mock-up, which I'm gonna use as a, a loose guide when I'm creating the actual painting. So after um, waiting for about a week for the woodworker to do his part where he sanded this beautiful piece of wood and cut it in thirds for me and put the French cleats on the back, I finally had the wood slabs in my studio. And at that point, I ended up using an air compressor to get all the little bits of 
of bark and dust out of all the tiny cracks and crevices before I was ready to paint on them. So after my slabs were completely cleaned, I applied a coat or two coats of clear sealer. This product is made by Zinser and it's called Bullseye Seal Coat. I have two reasons for applying this sealer before I start any other layers. One, you can see that the raw wood soaks up a lot of whatever you paint onto it. So I don't want the wood soaking up a lot of, of the next layers that I put on top of it. And the second reason I use this seal coat is because it brings out the beautiful wood grain by deepening the colors of the wood. And I'm going to purposely leave parts of this wood grain showing through. I'm not going to paint over all of it. So that was important to me to get that beauty of the wood to come through. So I'm only sealing the sides and the front faces of the slabs and I'm leaving the backs of the slabs unsealed because wood does expand and contract as it takes on moisture from the environment around it and then dries out. So you need to keep the back unsealed to allow somewhere for the moisture to come out as the wood is drying out over time. So after those two coats of clear sealer, I'm applying uh, two coats of gloss gel medium. So this doesn't look like much. It goes on a little bit milky and then it dries clear. But I'm putting this layer on because one, it it's theoretically blocks support induced discoloration, which is you don't want imp any possible impurities in the wood to be coming through your subsequent layers and discoloring your paint. And then the second reason I use the gloss gel medium is it makes the wood look super shiny and I'm really going for a high gloss effect. So at this point, after I've finished um, both the clear sealer and the gloss gel medium, then I will finally apply my acrylic gesso to the parts that I'm going to paint over. And then I'm going to leave uh, some of the parts of the wood unpainted because I want that part of the wood to show through. Something I learned during this project is what burl wood is. It's spelled B-U-R-L. A burl is a knobby, lumpy uh, protrusion that grows on the trunk of a tree. And that's what makes these beautiful, interesting curves in the silhouette of this tree trunk. I wasn't expecting this piece of wood to be quite so beautiful in its own right. So once I finally got it into the studio and it had been sanded to perfection, I looked at it and I said, oh no, I have to paint over these gorgeous details. And making the decisions of where to put the edges of the painting and what to paint over was actually quite painful. But the thing that made me feel better was remembering that my client wanted my painting combined with this unique curved silhouette that you can find in maple burl wood. And in the end, we got the silhouette that we wanted. So to have that beautiful silhouette, I was going to have to paint over some beautiful wood. You can see I'm following the wood grain very meticulously for the entire length of this tree trunk and keeping this line continuous from panel to panel provides a lot of continuity between the three pieces. And it also leaves the most beautiful details of the wood showing through. So this is acrylic dispersion ground, uh, commonly called gesso. And I'm applying the gesso for a few reasons. It would probably be fine to do without this step from an archival standpoint, but I chose to use a coat of gesso here because one, it gives a smooth surface to accept the paint. It shows me where my painting is going to be because I, as you can see, I'm leaving some of this wood showing through. And uh, if I know to only paint over the white parts, it just makes it easier for me to plan my painting. And it'll enhance adhesion of the paint 
by giving the surface some good tooth to paint on top of. And finally, the white color, uh, this bright white color will optimize the vibrancy of my paint colors. So following such a precise line was time consuming and detailed work, but after getting those outlines perfect, filling in the center with a big brush went pretty quickly. Next, I drew my plans for the design onto my primed panels. So this is the design that was agreed upon with the client, so I'm staying uh, pretty true to the mock-ups that I sent him. And then the maple leaf that I uh, took out of my previous painting called Winter Foretold. In the background, I'm putting looking glass rock there. And also the sky that was inspired by my painting Falling Leaves. I thought it was cool to make this long crack in the face of the wood look like the trail of this falling leaf. And then the fall foliage inspired by all of those photos of the fall trees in Western North Carolina. And at this point of the process, I've already done quite a lot of work and I just now at this point, I'm finally beginning the actual painting part. I start by blocking in the white color in the sky because there's, it's a very bright light sky. So I'm starting with a base of, of just plain white which I'll then add onto that in subsequent layers. You can see that I'm filling in the large areas with a palette knife. And then when I need to do something more detailed, I'm going to switch to a brush. And sometimes I'll even be using a very small brush for the details. So if I did the background first on the bottom slab with the Western North Carolina mountains the Appalachian mountain range and looking glass rock there. added all the colors I wanted in the sky with this peachy golden color providing a really nice contrast to the bluish gray colors. Started in with the bright red foliage in the foreground and then carried that, those fall colors all the way through, just roughly blocking in all the fall leaves.
most important details of this painting are in these large falling leaves that are floating on the swirling breeze in, in the air, which gives a sense of movement through the whole sky and also going from the top of the painting down through the three panels all the way to the bottom. Ending with this big leaf, which is the most detailed part of the whole painting. And here's the whole thing in just a few seconds. So you can see it all come together really quickly. And here are the finished slabs. When I finally finished this project, I definitely had a little celebration and it was so fun to see it come together at the end. And it is so beautiful in person. I definitely learned a lot and had a lot of fun doing this commissioned piece. So thanks for letting me share this project with you. And to pack it up to ship it across the country from Oregon to North Carolina, I built this custom crate to fit around the pieces with this inch thick foam in between the slabs, really tightly packed inside of a wooden crate. I think it ended up weighing 129 pounds when we shipped it off. 